Thanks again. My last duty for the day is to welcome back to the stage Human Rights Commissioner Ed Santo. Ed's going to uh, sum up some of the key messages from today and then he'll introduce uh, the President of the Human Rights Commission, Professor, Professor Rosalind Croucher, to close the conference. Thanks, Ed. Uh, thank you, Alan. I don't know about all of you, um, but for me, today has felt a bit like a fever dream. There have been competing visions. On the one hand, the robot slaves will drive our cars, manufacture our products, and tell us to put on a coat because it's cold outside. And then, on the other hand, in the kitchen right now, my smart toaster and thermo mix are plotting to kill me. <laughs> and these things seem simultaneously true. The problem, perhaps, is dual-use technology. Now, that's a really fancy $3 word or $3 term for something that actually we're all really familiar with. Lots of old tech is dual-use. For example, a knife um, has a benign or innocuous use when you're slicing a piece of bread, um, but it's uh, not so benign um, when someone stabs another person with it. But new technology raises the stakes in this area because this problem occurs more frequently and the consequences tend to be very severe. It'll come as no shock to you now for me to say that today we have launched our issues paper on human rights and technology. We see this very much as the start of our conversation. We're asking in the issues paper what rules and incentives does Australia need to protect human rights in technology, especially in decision making that uses AI, and also in how we make technology more accessible for people with disability and other marginalised groups. So, thanks to the expertise of our speakers, today's conference has helped us visualise some of the problems as well as opportunities. But now we need to find solutions to the problems that put basic individual dignity right at the core. We at the Human Rights Commission don't pretend that we have all of the answers. We need your input and we look forward to working with you. So with that, I'll hand over to my esteemed colleague, Rosalind Croucher, to draw the event to a close. Thank you, Ed, and what an outstanding day. Um, I have to say a few thank yous first, and then I will just make a quick closing observation just to draw some things to a close. Although I must say, can someone please stop my Fitbit being so bossy? I have a bossy coffee machine and a very bossy Fitbit. I think we need a bit of courtesy introduced into some of this technology. The thank yous first. We have four project partners to acknowledge. The Australian Government's Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. We saw the, the minister this morning um, uh, speaking to us in, in wonderful, encouraging terms. Her department um, is been behind this project as a major project partner, Herbert Smith Freehills and LexisNexis, as well as the University of Technology, Sydney, we also have an a expert reference group, who are, many of whom are dotted throughout the room and have joined us in and out through the day. Our speakers have been amazing, particularly those who've travelled from overseas. And while Australians are quite used to this, some of our international guests find it a little harder than we do. We also have some major conference supporters, namely Cisco and Pro Bono Australia. I'll add a couple of other thank yous. Our amazing Auslan interpreters. <laughs> and the Australian Human Rights Commission team under Ed Santo's leadership as Human Rights Commissioner. And now to some very brief observations. Brett Solomon in, in his um, talk today was described as, as being at the very start of the digital revolution. 
And revolution has been a theme throughout the day. Revolutions are turning points in history. And it was interesting that it came up as, as a key idea, a leitmotif in a number of the presentations. And I was very struck by this idea and the light and the dark that goes with revolutions. When Alan Finkel spoke this morning of his Aunt Rosa, he reminded us of the reign of terror which can accompany revolutions. Indeed, I was taken down that road of musing to the French Revolution and Madame Defarge. Mary Ann Williams, for a moment there, I could see you knitting. I think the key question that we are left with, and which is teased out in the issues paper that Ed launched today, is what kind of society do we want to have? What kind of society do we want to be? When the revolutionaries in France in the 1790s posed that question, they came, came up with an answer that was framed in three words. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. Liberty, equality, fraternity. And throughout the day I started jotting because there are many words that could frame the beginning of our new revolution. The people of France owned that slogan. The people who need to be in the revolutions, as Genevieve Bell encouraged us, need to have their own commitments. In the issues paper, um, there's an exploration of a number of principles. The UN principles, the guiding principles of various kinds are all useful, but I want to return to the French revolutionary ones. How would we frame our principles as revolutionaries today in approaching this new, the start of this new digital revolution. These were some of the words that occurred to me. And I won't try my um, Fringlish. Um, I have, um, in, in the past, I should just as an aside or a footnote, as it were, um, fess up that I had the title of an article that played around with French abominably in the context of perpetuity. So the property lawyers might find this mildly amusing. There's a doctrine in, in perpetuities of um, children who are in the womb. So I, I blame Alan Finkel for taking me down this path because he was talking about IVF. And in property law, if, if a person is, um, if a person, usually in this context, the husband dies, but his wife is pregnant, then the child is deemed to be his under the doctrine of en ventre sa mère. Well, when I was writing many years ago, around the, the not long after Louise Brown's birth, about um, the, the description of uh, the, the, the challenges of artificial conception and IVF, in the property law environment, I used this title on an article. It was referring to children en ventre sa frigidaire. I won't, um, <laughs> won't repeat that. But in the, in the thinking of the liberty, equality, fraternity line, these were the words that came to me. I'll just say them in an English form, but you can put the ite on the end of each of them. Security. Responsibility. Integrity. Inclusivity. And above all, humanité. Humanity because it's without the last that we will be abandoning all hope in entering the new digital revolution. So I will leave you with that. Security, responsibility, integrity, inclusivity, and humanité. The Australian Human Rights Commission doesn't own this conversation. But today, I think we've added an important group of phrases and paragraphs into a conversation that, for many of you, is familiar, ongoing, and part of your DNA. For us at the Human Rights Commission, we would urge that in this conversation, what we have endeavoured to do is ensure that human rights 
is at the heart, and if I can add in, is the soul of it. So thank you all very much for joining us in this wonderful conversation today. Um, I hope your Fitbits boss you as mine has been doing and you actually get a little bit of exercise before the end of the day. I have found the day absolutely riveting and it's been a rare treat to just sit and listen. So to all of you, thank you for sharing this day with us and good luck and uh, good journeying on the next stage in this important mission for all of us. Thank you.